guys. So I'll get into my stack of library books here right away. But first I have a few different little housekeeping things I want to talk about um, before we get onto the books. Okay, where do I even start? First of all, on Sunday at 2 p.m. my time, which I never know what time zone I'm in because I live in like one of the few places in the world that does not do day daylight savings time. So I will try to figure out my time zone for now and put it up here. Um, I'm planning on, you know, this is assuming I can figure out the technology to do this. I feel like I should be able to figure this out, um, but I've never done it before. So I am planning on scheduling one that should be able to pop up in your subscriptions sometime after this so that you can like set a reminder so that you can be alerted when this goes live. Um, yeah, so we are going to be doing a live to uh, choose my TBR for the month of May. So I'm going to be using Hey Reader and using the wheel and picking different prompts and you guys can be in the comments and giving suggestions on which books I should um, pick for each of those prompts. I do have a little bit of extra space on here so we might start out the beginning of the video adding a couple books in. I'm not sure. We'll see how this all goes. If for some reason I can't figure out the live TBR, then I'll film it myself on Sunday and put it up on Monday. Um, it wouldn't be as fun, but if it doesn't work, that's what we'll do. But I'm hoping the live works. So that was my first thing. My second thing is kind of sad, um, but it is what it is. Um, I'm planning on for this next season, um, I don't know how long that's going to be, uh, just doing one video a week. So I'm just going to be doing my Monday video. So I don't know, I feel, I've feel i been feeling a little bit overwhelmed these days and as much as I love booktube, I have so much fun with it, this is just a hobby. So you know, something's got to give at this point and I feel like this is kind of one of those areas that has to give a little. It's just right now between fostering, our fostering has like had so many emotional ups and downs lately and that's draining and then many of you know that I have a homeschool website and a bunch of stuff going on with the homeschool side of things and I'm kind of funneling more of my energy into that these days because um, it is a part-time job for me and yeah so it's just something I want to work on a little bit more in this next little while as well as just spend a little bit more time with my family so for that reason I will only be posting videos on here on Mondays for the next while um, if you want to hear more of what I'm reading and stuff, make sure you sign up for my newsletter. I always have it linked in the description. And as well, I will still be posting on Patreon. Um, right now, I am currently reading Agatha Christie's The Murder at the Vicarage. And every quarter of the book that I read, I've been sharing a video, sharing some of the my thoughts, who I think did it. Um, yeah, just random different things. So that's been going on over on Patreon this month. Um, I'm almost three quarters of the way through this right now. That's been fun and then I share a bunch of extra stuff, a bunch of extra stuff over on Patreon as well. Okay, that was a long little ramble. Now let's get into the books. Um, I kind of actually separated them on piles this time. So we'll just start with this pile. I kind of have like a Christian fiction pile here. Um, lots of people have suggested that I read this author. Kristen Heitzman. Uh, this is The Edge of Recall. Uh, I think when I talked about books that I like, or things I like in books, people were recommending her. And I don't know if this book specifically was recommended or if I just picked the first one off of the stack or like off of her books that she's written. Yeah, so I don't really know much about this. Um, it's supposed to be romantic suspense as well, which is kind of like, I don't know, is this just a Christian fiction thing? Is romantic, as, romantic suspense like a genre in non-Christian books as well? Um, I don't know. I'm curious to give her a try, but I feel like, I don't know, I struggle with romantic suspense. There's a couple authors I can read from that write, it, write that, and then there's other ones I just struggle with. But lots of people think, seem to think I would like this. So this says she's, she locked up the vision like a monster in her mind's maze, but it lurked there on the edge of recall. I don't know. Um, and then I got the first book in the Eddie Flynn series. So I talked about things I don't like in books and Eddie Flynn is actually a lawyer. Um, I accidentally read kind of like a book in the middle of the series a while ago and I really enjoyed it. It That one did not focus on him being a, a lawyer. He was just, he just happened to be a lawyer in the middle of a story that was happening. Um, so I'm not sure how much this has to do with, how much the other books have to do with 
the, you know, the, like the lawyer scene. Um, but I'm definitely curious and willing to give uh, it a try. And I want to start at the beginning of the series because it, the book I read, I enjoyed, but it um, definitely felt like I was missing some stuff. So he used to be a con artist, and then he became a lawyer. And then it says, turns out those two aren't that different. Um, so, yeah. Oh, look at this. It says, meet Eddie Flynn, lawyer, husband, father, con artist, liar, drunk. So he's definitely got a bit of a backstory. So I'm curious to start at the beginning here. Another author you guys have recommended so much to me is um, Nancy, I don't know how to pronounce her last name, M-E-H-L, Mel, Meal? I'm not sure. So this is book one, is Mind Games. Um, this was recommended, um, this was one of the options actually that my patrons chose for our April, April buddy, oh, I cannot talk, April buddy read, but it like just quite didn't make it. Um, but I, she is, this is romantic suspense as well, Christian romantic suspense. Um, but I have a, I have a good feeling about her books. Um, it's probably too because of the cover. Like this doesn't look as cheesy as that. Um, but yeah, so this is FBI behavioral analyst Kaylee Quinn. Um, yeah, I don't know. And I do know that this is a series, so I know it's not like at the end of each book, the person's going to get paired off, probably. Um, yeah, so I think probably out of all the books here, this is the one I would like to prioritize the most. But if I'm being honest, I have not even read, today is April 14th. I have not even read a single book off of my April TBR. Have I even started any? I have not even started any. I'm reading other books, but um, yeah, my TBR is not going so well. So, I mean, maybe I'll just read this and continue by not, you know, reading off of my TBR. Uh, and then the last one is, um, I'm assuming this is also romantic suspense. Um, this is Living Lies by Natalie uh, Walters. And this is also a series, Harbored Secrets Book One. In the little town of Walton, Georgia, everyone knows your name, but no one knows your secret. Um, I grew up in a small town, and I feel like everyone knew your secrets, too. Uh, she is a military wife. Okay, so that could be interesting, uh, this author. Um, I get, like, just based off of the cover, I get vibes of, um, like, the Nikki Boyd files. I can't remember who the author was of that. Um, so I feel like this would be... I don't know, this is just just going off of covers you guys um i feel like this one would be really good and then i feel like this one would be like next level and then i feel like this one would be like level after that that is my random thoughts based off of the covers of christian fiction books uh let's do uh, my middle grade pile next so in my q a one of the books i talked about was a book that i read as it was a question someone asked about books you'd read as a kid or something and I talked about a book that I had read that I couldn't remember the name of but I like, knew the story and many of you think that was Why Did She Have to Die? It's about a girl whose sister dies in a car crash and yeah it's just like a thin little book so I might try rereading this or reading it if I if it's not the right book. I uh, have a few books that are kind of like flashbacks to my childhood that I would like to read in the next little while um, but yeah, my reading has not been spectacular, so I'm not sure I'm going to get to that. I'm not sure I want to prioritize a book that is just kind of like a for fun, already read it kind of read, but we'll see. Then I got uh, The Lost Property Office. I really like the cover of this. Um, this is a James R. Hannibal book. This is his middle grade series, the first book in his series. Um, I have read one of his books that's coming out this year um, from NetGalley and I was very intrigued and it made me want to pick up more of his books. I didn't love it but um, he, I don't know, he has some kind of like background as military or he's served in the US Air Force as a stealth bomber pilot and a predator mission commander so he has like some really cool background that is added into at least the one book that I read um, and so I thought it would be really interesting to read a middle grade book written by him. And to be honest I actually think I just ordered a copy of this from Book Outlet as well so I might get to it eventually but probably not the library edition. And then I have a couple books that came out. Uh, is this one of 2021? Yes this is a new release, Halfway to Harmony. 
Uh, after Tank climbed on that bus and disappeared, everything had been so quiet and empty and boring. Until now. Now there was Posey and Banyo and a hot air balloon. I really don't know, um, but I know Barbara O'Connor wrote the book Wish, uh, another middle grade book that I really enjoyed. So yeah, I would love to read this. I'm just not sure I actually will. This is my problem right now. I think I'm going to break up with the library and take a break from requesting books. Probably, I've been thinking about this for a little while, probably until the end of the summer. Um, I would just, I have so many books that I would like to read, but I kind of try, generally tend to prioritize library books since they have to go back. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I want to get to a few of these at least. Um, this is another new release that I really want to get to actually. This is called Alone. Um, I love the cover. And this is a free verse novel. I'll never know if the risk I didn't take was the stupidest decision of my life or the thing that saved it, but I am alive now, and as painful as it is, loneliness alone won't kill me. At least I hope not. Um, yeah, so I don't actually know what even happens here, but it's it's free verse. So while it is like 400 pages, it's there's not that many words per page. So this is another one I would like to prioritize just said I'm like gonna try not to read my library books and now I'm talking about all the ones I want to read. Oh, <laughs> this is another one that I ordered the book. Okay, so I think I had requested this book because Anne from Elizabeth Ann Reads talked about it. Um, and then I also noticed that it's on Book Outlet, so I ordered it. This is My Life with the Liars. And so I, from my understanding, this is a book about a girl that is removed from a cult and it's her journey like once she's been removed. Um, so I'm like totally intrigued and I thought was just planning on reading the library copy and then I saw that it's written by Kayla Carter who wrote Forever or A Long Long Time that I just enjoyed um, like a month or two ago and so I was like well then I'll spend the three or four dollars or whatever it was on Book Outlet and just buy myself a copy um, because yeah I'm definitely gonna read that one. Um, this one I had requested for Middle Grade March and it didn't come in time. This is Echo Mountain. Um, I've heard good things about Lauren Wolk. Um, I think she wrote Wolf Hollow, didn't she? Yeah. So I own one of her books and I haven't read it yet. So I really don't feel like I can read a library book written by her until I've read like a book that I own. So yeah, it looks cool. Also, I thought I would read more middle grade in March and I just was not in a middle grade mood. I've been really in a mystery suspense kind of mood. So yeah, next one, I can make this promise. Um, I do not know where I heard about this one, but I'm very intrigued. This is a Native American, oh, a girl that's half Native American. She also knows that her mother was adopted by a white couple and has no connection to her birth family. Um, and I believe this was a new release as well. Oh, 2019. This copy is just like brand new, it feels like. Um, yeah, and I've been wanting more like indigenous stories since... Uh, I think 95% of the foster kids in our province are indigenous, um, but it's hard to find books that are have indigenous characters, so I've been on the lookout and yeah, I would like to read that one. Okay, next stack. This is kind of just a random assortment of fiction. I have a couple of different poetry books, so I don't even know how to pronounce this author's name. Um, someone that I follow on YouTube enjoys their poetry. I don't even know if this is male or female. Um, I don't know. I, the person that I was watching that liked, so I have Milk and Honey and Homebody, um, liked her poetry. I feel like this is a female. I don't know. Um, doesn't actually have a very similar taste to me, so I'm not sure I will like it. Um, but they're really short poems, which is something that I like in my poetry. Uh, so I'm going to give it a try. Oh, is this a Canadian author? This one definitely says Canadian. Um, I have to look this up. It actually doesn't say in um, the little bio thing. Female, she's a female, but I don't know. Yeah, okay. Anyway, I don't know if I'm going to like these, but I've been on the lookout for more poetry, which also brings me to Barbara Kings Oliver. Uh, Kings, Kings Oliver? I don't know how to pronounce that. I read one of her books. I was like, was it dog poetry? Was that her? Um, I'm not sure. I didn't like it. And her poems are a lot longer than I generally like, but give it a try. That's the nice thing about poetry is you can read a few poems and you don't 
have to forever wonder like what happens in the rest of the book did i did i miss something you could read a few poems and decide if you like the general style or not then okay i have the project which i know i have heard the general idea oh it's another canadian author i should do like be intentional with reading some canadian authors sometimes um because do you know what okay side side oh i get so sidetracked um the person that wrote Iggy Morton, those books, is Canadian, and I get really excited because I feel like uh, the Canadian authors I had to read when I was in, uni in university were not my favorite, so I get really excited when I find a Canadian author that like writes books that I'm actually interested in. So anyway, I don't know what this is. This is The Unity Project, Stole My Sister, Murdered My Son, Saved My Life. Um, after a tragic accident kills most of her family and leaves her little sister on the brink of death, B is in desperate is desperate for a miracle. I think someone on my Patreon was reading this and it's, it sounded so interesting and I was intrigued. Um, but I, like, I don't actually know what, even what genre this is. Like what kind of book is this? Oh, cults. The first subject in the thing here is cults and sisters. And okay, so that definitely bumped it up. Um, oh, and I gotta read this one too. I should make a pile. That one that one that one that one oh my goodness okay well i bought that one okay so far these are my like three my tbr on my library stack alone mind games the project and then like there's the two that i bought that i have coming in the mail yet um okay i also really want to read this one the lost the La lost apothecary oh my goodness i cannot talk today um, I first heard about this from Krista over at Books and Jams, and this is kind of like historical fiction, and I believe this lady is the last apothecary. I mean, the title says that. But I thought that she often, like, she has a secret apothecary shop that caters to an unusual kind of clientele. Women across the city, um, she sells poisons, well-disguised poisons, to use against the oppressive men in their lives. And then 200 years later, a historian discovers a vial in the river, and she's trying to figure this out. Um, it's trying to solve London's long-lost apothecary murders. And this it sounds so interesting. This is such a different take on things than I've ever read. And I think that I've heard that the people that have read it have enjoyed it. So this will go on my stack to read as well. My library recently got rid of um, finds. And between them getting rid of that and having like a littler kid and COVID and not being able to take all my kids into the library, I feel like I'm taking advantage of the system and not bringing them my books back when I'm supposed to. Okay, then I have the language of flowers. Um, Tiffany from Beautiful Minutia talked about this recently in her March wrap up, I think. Um, this is something to do with a a kid from the fosters after a childhood spent in the foster care system she's unable to get close to anybody and her only connection to the world is through flowers and their meanings so that really intrigued me i have a feeling this is going to be a little bit maybe more literary than i normally normally like to read i also saw that book outlet had this book as well so i might grab it from there um i'm intrigued because of the foster care side of things i'm just not sure if i'm going to enjoy the writing um just like predictions i'm making so we're like really slow on this whole bandwagon of um uh video baby monitors but it's really helpful when i'm trying to film a video and the kids are sleeping except the toddler is totally not he's just wandering around his room putting things in his bed and i'm thoroughly enjoying watching little snippets of this but at least he's um you know nice and quiet having some quiet time i guess okay then i have four books that either people recommended to me um in one of my videos or possibly my library got mixed up and gave me books that i didn't request because <laughs> there is there's four books here that i just don't remember ever hearing about don't know why I have them. Okay, so the first one of these books is The Alliance. This is about a old order Mennonite community and there's some kind of plane crash and 
I don't know, I do not feel like I've ever heard of this. And I looked on my list of like books that have been recommended to me. And I mean, I'm not good at keeping track of all of them, but this one I didn't see on there. So I'm very confused. Yeah, so there's that one. Then this one actually does look familiar. This is the talented Miss Farwell. So I don't know if I heard about this in someone else's video and I just forgot to write it down on my list. Is this a new release? 2020 release. A page turner of greed and obsession, survival and self invention, a small town community and the dazzling high stakes world of high end art. <sighs> yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> so if you guys recommended these to me or have heard of them or read them, um, let me know if I should read them. Um, and then this one is The Last Flight. I'm so confused, you guys. I obviously request too many books. Two women, two flights, one chance to disappear. Um, this Oh, this sounds kind of more like a thriller. You might know a husband like Claire's, ambitious, admired, with deep pockets, but behind closed doors he has a temper that burns as bright as his promising political career. And a chance meeting in an airport brings her together with a woman who seems equally desperate to flee her life. Uh, yeah. So, the identity switch? This sounds really interesting, but... Like, I do not remember ever hearing about this, so I'm not sure. And then the last one is Our Darkest Night. This one, even the cover gives me like all the light we cannot see and um, the Nightingale vibes, and it is a novel of Italy and the Second World War. To survive the Holocaust, a young Jewish woman must pose as a Christian farmer's wife in this unforgettable novel inspired by true events. Yeah. I'm blanking. So did my library just give me someone's holds that were like beside mine? Because some of my librarians are a little bit more meticulous than others. Or did I request these and not remember them? That is the real question here. Uh, let me know if you've heard of any, any of those. And there we go. That's my library haul for I think the next little while. I still probably have quite a few that will come in that I have requested. Um, over the last few months, but I do not plan on putting holds on anymore for this season. Um, pretty much as long as this season where I am only filming once a week, um, if I don't have time to read and I don't have time to film, like try to free up a little bit of time both ways and so I can get rid of some of the books on my shelves, get those read. So let me know which one of these ones of these I should try to prioritize and um, maybe push off some of my other reads to get to. And yeah, thanks for watching guys. Be sure to try to hop on on Sunday for the hopefully live TBR if I can figure that out. Um, I did it at 2 p.m. because I know some people are in different time zones so that hopefully the majority of people can make it. And yeah, so I guess I will not be seeing you on Thursdays from now on and just on Mondays, except this week it will be hopefully Sunday. So thanks for watching guys and thanks for being here.